I was born in Salisbury, Maryland. I moved to Talbot County when I was 20 months old. Oh, okay, so you're a newcomer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I graduated from high school, and then I went away to Morgan State College, which is now Morgan State University. Then from there, I went to law school. From there, I went to the military, um, and um, I settled in Washington, D.C. When I came back home for good, it was 10 years ago, and it means I had been gone for a total of like 52 years before I came back for good. Now, I used to come back and forth, and, and quite frankly, I was at home so, so often until a lot of people never thought I never left. It can adequately be said that I had dual residency because the time that I was in Washington, D.C., I was also the president of the NACP here in Tarleton County for a while, and I was also president of the Maryland State NACP. Oh, so all my activity uh, act, uh, in terms of organizations and so forth was in the state of Maryland. Two things about Cambridge, at least in terms of the big civil rights episodes. First in 1963, that's when the National Guard went down. And I missed all that good action because I was stationed in Fort Worth. I was way out in Fort Worth, California. I almost went AWOL, wouldn't come home with Jordan. But that was in 1963. We had National Guard down there for maybe a couple months. And then in 1967, that's when Rap Brown came to town and some buildings burned down. Okay. It wasn't really a riot, you know, it was played up as a riot. But what happened was, um, on the last day of school of 1967, um, a little black student, elementary, first or second grade, was walking home from school. Two little white boys, again, first or second grade, they're about sick, they dug on him. Now, they didn't get hurt, they really didn't get hurt, but apparently the, um, the, the black student went home, told his mom, so forth, and um, then uh, she reported it to the law enforcement. So the, the uh, little, uh, two little white boys were, um, were charged, and they went to court. Mrs. Juanita Mitchell, who at that time, who, who by the way, was a great, tremendous civil rights attorney and uh, just uh, a civil rights uh, activist, uh, she didn't back down, she didn't take any prisoners, she, she um, won a lot of civil rights cases um, for the NACP, but she was the president of the NACP at that time. Anyway, she called me and said, Walter, let's go, go down and observe the trial. So we went down and observed the trial, and on the strength of the testimony of a white store owner, um, those two little white boys were convicted. Well, the judge didn't send them to jail, and there's no reason to send those two kids. It was just a kid, a prank. That's all it was. And he didn't send them to jail. Well, some in the black community, some of the black activists at that time, they raised hell. Oh, they really had. And we had a few mass meetings down there and so forth. So someone called Gloria Richardson back, and she came back to Cambridge. And Gloria was involved with a Student Nonviolent Action Committee, SNCC, right, because the Cambridge Nonviolent Action Committee is the organization that she was the chairperson of uh, going back to 1963. And um, so that was an affiliate of SNCC. So by that time, Rap Brown, you know, John Lewis used to be the chairperson of, of, of SNCC. Well, by that time, Rap Brown was the chairperson. So uh, apparently, she um, got in contact with Rap Brown to come down and have a rally. They had the rally there on Pine Street. Now, while the rally was going on, right across the street from uh, where the um, Elks home is now, there was a two-story black wood frame elementary school and somebody set the school on fire while Rap Brown was having and of course all his words were inflammatory you know if, if, if Cambridge doesn't turn it down uh, turn it around we'll burn it down all that stuff you know and uh, so um, uh, the fire from the school spread that's that's how that fire started um, and now I had seen uh, where uh, several days prior to Rap Brown coming to town where the school had been uh, set on fire before, but it went out 
flame went out. So they did it again. And of course it burned it down. Arson, right? Let me put it this way. The information that I have came to me, suggested that it was intentionally set on fire. Yes. And um, so there, was, there were uh, several black businesses that were burned down. Uh, the Elks Home, a place called um, Green Savoy, and a couple other places. And um, then, <laughs> um, what's interesting is a little piece of um, trivia is, well, how did Rat Brown get out of town? Okay. He went to the hospital because somebody shot a shotgun um, and one of those pellets hit him. Well, it was a, it was a um, strategy in the civil rights movement at that time that the least little uh, uh, situation that happened in terms of an injury or, or, or superficial inju injury or something like that, you go to the hospital so we can build our case. See? Saying that the uh, law enforcement or the power structure uh, um, was abusive and uh, uh, so forth. So while Rap Brown was at the hospital in Cambridge, word came down to the black community that uh, Yates was going to, the state's attorney was going to charge him with inciting a riot. So they had to get Rap Brown out of town. Took him out in the hearse. Now, the St. Clair Funeral Home was the headquarters for uh, the civil rights activities back in 1963. And um, so um, they put him in the hearse and they took him through East New Market. And a friend of Rat Brown, who was probably another SNCC worker, came down from Washington, D.C. and picked him up. I uh, was not a proponent of violence. And I have never uh, embraced that. But in terms of direct action, uh, certainly I'm a proponent of that. I mean, I led some demonstrations uh, in various places uh, in uh, the state of Maryland, including here in Talbot County. And I'm ready to leave another one, to tell you the truth. Um, I need to exercise in my old age. Well, in 1961, uh, you understand, and you were well aware that the Civil Rights Act of 64 had not passed. So that was legal segregation, see. Um, I, I couldn't, the only place in town that would let black folks sit down and eat with Tower Water Inn and, and, and um, Hill's uh, drugstore up here. Is that right? That's right. Those were the only two places you could go to the Tower Water Inn. Well, Mr. Grimes, Johnson Grimes, who owned the Tower Water Inn, he was from Staten Island, New York. So he didn't come down with all this baggage, and plus he had a whole lot of money. In fact, in 1959, the Frontiersman was a black organization, um, had um, uh, uh, its, um, during the Christmas holidays, it had um, um, a formal affair. And um, um, in the gold room. So some of the um, homies, uh, the white folk business people around town didn't like it and they, uh, I was told that they went over to say something to Mr. Grimes and he said, told them they could go to hell. He was a millionaire, he, I mean, he didn't. and then Hill's Drugstore, you know, in those days, and still is, Hill's Drugstore is probably one of the few drugstores that still has a lunch counter. Yeah. So yeah, black folks could go in there and issue. The issue was to, to break down um, a segregation. Now, um, in schools, lunch counters, employment, housing, across the board. Those were the legal issues. Now, it was easy to focus on um, legal segregation by uh, states and sit-ins at the lunch counters. Did you feel like it was a hostile environment in Talbot County? And you to be quite honest about it, I never fo thought that there was a hostile environment, but there was an environment of indifference and, there was, uh, and it was an environment of set legalized segregation and discrimination, yes. And I um, realized that when I was probably five, six years old. See, um, I realized there was a difference. I always look at it this way. Um, there's segregation and there's discrimination. And the two are not necessarily the same. See, segregation is not giving me that job. 
discrimination is I'm on that job and then you don't promote me. You get promoted, but I don't get promoted. Uh -huh. See? Um, so segregation is still around. I mean, uh, discrimination is still around, even places that have been uh, desegregated. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's what I uh, look for now. And I, as, as uh, Dr. Martin Luther King said, um, uh, freedom is never given up by the uh, oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed.